Hi, this is Thomas Aronsen. I'm gonna just explain to you about three different ways of breathing that in uh, translated from yoga teaching, from uh, pranayama. In a simplified way, three ways of breathing, coffee, water, whiskey. Coffee breathing, water breathing, whiskey breathing. And it's a metaphor, of course, that we can't have too much coffee every day. We can't have too much whiskey every day, but we can have a lot of water. So the water breathing, I'm just going to explain a little bit about that, is uh, scientifically is HRV breathing. It's when your heartbeat goes up when you breathe in and goes down when you breathe out. And I'm not just talking about uh, heartbeats per second. I'm talking about the variety between the heartbeats. So this is uh, scientifically measured. And also they have looked at yogis, Tibetan monks, general people that have meditated for 10,000 hours plus plus plus. And when I go into uh, breathing, their in-breath and out-breath matches their um, heart variety. So the heart is really flexible. It's um, also looked at the brain get more oxygen. It's lower inflammation, balancing the hormone system in the body. So it's an amazing way of breathing. And the way that you find this breathing, you can find it by um, HRV monitor on a computer and kind of go technically into exactly your own rhythm. Or you can also discover around five seconds in and out. So when you're breathing in, you're using your diaphragm and you feel that four second, five second in and just let your breath come out naturally. And wait to the body to let you know what you want to breathe in again. And in this sense, you can find that optimal in breath and optimal out breath and you can even Feel your pulse, if you can feel it in your hand or here. When you're breathing in, you can notice there is a, like the speed of the heart beat goes a little bit up and when you breathe out, the speed of the heart beats goes a little down. And the way that I feel it is more like boom. Boom, 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 and then boom, 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 boom. It's like um, something I have been training myself to do. But you can also just find that in breath, find that out breath, and stay with this. And you can actually feel over time that as you breathe in this way, your system goes just into balance. You feel your body much better. Uh, there is a balance also between the two parts of the nervous system, the parasympathetic, the sympathetic, the fight, flight, freeze mechanism, and the rest, recovery, repair, restore. So it's a lot of cool things there. Okay, so uh, this is the breathing of water that we can drink as much as we want almost throughout the day. So the other way of breathing, sometimes that can help you get into that water breathing is coffee breathing that is also relevant to maybe breath of fire, some other pranayama breathing exercises. And the diaphragma is again very important. So we're not just breathing belly out and fast, um, fast breathing like this, but we are engaging the diaphragma, so like this. And if you breathe for this for long and you get headache in these things, you just have to cool it down. Don't go so hard into it. This is one way of the coffee breathing. Another way you can also breathe the Wim Hof method, where you actually do controlled hyperventilation. Maybe out the mouth. Starting slow. And then there's tricks and the varieties. As you go into this hyperventilation and you start to breathe uh, the last breath out and you hold. Basically by just holding that out breath, you have charged up your body a little bit so you can hold that out breath, um, just hold your breath actually. 
and it will just trigger also the uh, calming parts of our nervous system and um, but the hyperventilation in itself can be that coffee so you can have some coffee in the morning to wake up uh, the metaphor here of this breathing is that we can use this breathing before we just need a little bit of energy before maybe training before uh, presentation a meeting um, to maybe regulate ourselves a little better so when we need that energy boost that we can also get from the water breathing but we need it faster we can do this coffee breathing if we feel like and also when you do this coffee breathing the diaphragmatic like uh, breath of fire you can actually relax after and see if you can get an easier access into the water brain. Because you've charged your system a little bit up, so your system naturally maybe wants to just calm down again. And maybe you could feel some endorphins or something releasing out of that more intense way of breathing. And then you can kind of feel the contrast of how it's more relaxing with its water breathing. In and out and then you can also take it to the next stage where we're talking about whiskey breathing here it's more when the breath is really really slow and maybe emphasizing more um, time on the out breath because the in breath in itself have this quality biological quality of raising a heart rhythm makes us a little more alert uh, focused but the out breath is this other uh, button that pushes that nervous system into restore, relaxation, recovery, restoration and also we feel gravity much more is a relaxing sense of breathing and that's why we naturally breathe whoa like fast in when we're uh, stressed and we don't let that out breath really come out from the depth so to introduce you to that whiskey type of breathing, we can also take that water breathing. Five seconds in and just go deeper on the out breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can count it if you feel that your mind is just getting lost. So the mind has something to focus on. Or you can just feel it out. When you let your out breath really go slow and it shouldn't feel like a, a forced thing so you're not forcing yourself so eventually when you have this optimal deeper out breath here we're not kind of uh, competing with ourselves we're not like see if i can go to 15 seconds see if i can go to 20 seconds out breath it's more that you have to get into the body's natural way of calming the nervous system, of calming those heartbeats, of just calming your entire body down and centering you, grounding you to, to gravity, basically. So the outbreath have that quality of really feel this gravitational pull. How my head is resting over my ribcage, ribcage resting over my, my hip, my pelvic floor. And the in-breath is more that opposite. That little bit of levitation, focus, alertness, and that out-breath can lead that energy eventually to a more calm, a deeper, a more introceptive um, space. Introceptive meaning looking within, where you can really go maybe also beyond that uh, barrier of conscious, unconscious. Conscious, breathing in unconscious just getting some more awareness and also in your body your hands your feet so it's a wonderful exercise and the reason maybe also we separate a little, a little bit to coffee water whiskey you can have a lot of whiskey no i mean you can have a lot of water every day uh, not too much water because breathing is in itself a training, so we don't gonna overtrain our breathing and our diaphragma. But the whiskey thing also, you can't have that. You can have a glass of whiskey maybe a day, or like a glass of wine. But the point here with the breathing is that you don't want to go too deep all the time. 
because eventually you can lose connection or that integration with reality and the environment you're living in. You can become a little bit like introverted, little tuned in. So that's also a recommendation to not do this whiskey breathing too much. Same as coffee breathing, it's going to stimulate also a lot of um, hormones in your system and you increase like a little bit of adrenaline, uh, cortisol. That's why it's good in the morning because we want our cortisol up in the morning. But that whiskey breathing can be really good at the night time, for example, where you need to just calm down, sink deep in and just switch over to water breathing. If things get too deep, water breathing is perfectly fine. And that's just the physiological, biological things. And it's up to you basically how you want to take your psychological things. So that's a different topic when it comes to also breathing, because breathing is this, this field of possibilities, basically, that we can access as human beings. Maybe some animals can sit down and meditate. I don't know, but we have this ability to, to build that concentration, to build that flow, to build that uh, sense of deepening and that we can actually get more aware, more uh, tension, more conscious of the unconscious processes. And um, it's a gift in so many ways that we can train, strengthen our immune system. There's so many amazing things coming with breathing. Uh, and there's also this <clears throat> challenging thing sometimes that we, the breathing also invite us to feel our body, to feel maybe areas, zones that we haven't been aware of. And that can be painful, but there's also this thing about, uh, if you resist to feel, it will persist. And eventually those feelings, those part of you that wants your attention, your body wants your attention, will maybe scream out for your attention so much that eventually one day you don't have any choice but to listen. If not, you're really good at escaping and uh, distracting yourself. So again, a little off track there, back on track. You have uh, coffee breathing, a uh, fast, intense breathing, you have the water breathing, the regulation, the balance, the equilibrium between the fight, flight, uh, rest and digest system. And then you have the whiskey breathing, where you can go deeper, uh, experience a calmer and deeper state. So it's all about balancing. So take it as you want to take it. And uh, I can share a link about the the description of the um, where it came from, the Ayurvedic, uh, the Pranayama breathing, how they also yeah, kind of symbolize this coffee breathing, water breathing and whiskey breathing. Have a great time. See you around.